Hello, my name is Anya, and today we are going to use a Facebook developer's account and WhatsApp integration with the WhatsApp API to send a dynamic message through WhatsApp and our bubble applications. Register as a meta developer. You can just follow this doc, I'll link it in the description box below, and it's pretty self explanatory. I already have a meta developer account, so I'm just going to go straight to my apps. And the first thing we want to do is create an app. And we're going to call this Other. And I just want this to be a business. So I'll give it an app name. Now that I've created my app, I'm going to add a product to my app. I'm going to scroll down and click on Integrate with WhatsApp and just click set up. For this, I need to select a meta business account. If you don't have this already, you need to create one, but I currently have one associated with my other account, so I'm just going to select that. Now let's click continue. Now that I'm here, I'm gonna click on start using the API. And it gives me a temporary access token, a test phone number, and some curl code over here. Given a temporary access token, a test phone number that we can send messages with, and then this to field over here. Since we're in development mode, you can have up to five phone numbers here. And once you add one, you can't remove it. So make sure to add your own phone number here so you can make sure that you're getting the messages when you try to send one. And here we're given some curl code to do exactly that. So I'm logged in on my WhatsApp account. Let's see send message. And we see that that was successful. If we go over here, we can see that I got a message in my WhatsApp account. And it's just a standard hello world message. But essentially, we were able to successfully send a message. That's half of the battle. So this is great. But now, over here, it doesn't really give me an option to specify the body of the message. And I don't want to be sending people a hello world message. I want a custom message. So how do I do that? Well, let's set that up right now. I'm going to go over here to WhatsApp and then a quick start. And let's click message manage, manage message template. This is going to op open up the WhatsApp manager for this particular business. The WhatsApp manager over here, it's associated with the business manager over here. So right now mine is Double Karma, another application that I built. But yours is going to be something else. And if you don't have one set up, you're going to want to do that right over here. From there, we can go down to WhatsApp Manager. And if we just look over here, we can find our message templates. Here I have a couple, but you would probably just have the Hello World. And from there, we want to create a template. Let's give it a reason. I'm going to say it's a marketing message. Let's label it Account Confirmation. And you need to choose a language. You can choose a bunch, but I'm just going to do English US and just that one. From here, we can click continue. We can choose a header. If I add one, we can see that it shows up here in bold like that. I could also do media and we would see it like that. But for now, I'm just going to have none and I'm going to add a body. So thank you. For creating an account.
Good job. And that's it. We don't need a footer. And <clears throat> if we were to add a footer, it would look like this. If we wanted it to look like that. And then we can also add a button. Here we have a lot of flexibility. We have call to action and then also marketing and quick reply buttons. I'm going to choose this visit website call to action. <clears throat> I'm going to choose this visit website call to action, but I could change that over here. This can say confirm your account. And our URL could be static. I can make this <clears throat> www. I can make this https slash bit.ly slash zero to one bubble. Or we could also make this dynamic. And just for the sake of showing more, let's make this dynamic, even though I'm only going to use the static value. Now I'm asking them to confirm an account. Here, this will say please click the link to confirm your account. But this message seems very impersonal. I'm not even saying like thank you, Anya, or thank you, Tom, for creating an account. And by the way, how would we do that? Well, down here we have this option to add a variable and you can't add it in the middle here you just kind of have to write your text around it thank you Anya for creating an account and that's it here we need to add something this would be thank you Anya what does this mean is it thank you so much for creating an account or is it thank you a name for creating an account and this is sort of the message preview that we get and this is looking good so now i'm going to hit submit and we get this pop-up and then we can click confirm When to reload and we see that this is currently in review. What that means is they need to make sure that this isn't a spam email that you're sending. So the Facebook team will take anywhere from one to 24 hours to review this message template. So you're gonna have to wait for that. So we can send a message from here. Let's bring it over into our bubble app. We wanna add an API call. I'm just gonna call this WhatsApp. And then one down here that's going to be send a message. This is going to be a post call. And we can see exactly what we have to do down here when we go to API setup. The code is given in curl. And all we have to do is essentially copy this over. So I'm going to start. We want to copy everything that's over here in the body. I have it copied already to my clipboard. I just want to paste it so that it's a little more organized and easy to receive. Then we want to grab this URL over here. We can see that it's a post. So let's make this a post and then paste the URL in there. This is not going to be data. This is going to be an action. So I'm going to make it like that. And we need to add a header. So I'm just going to go up here and add a shared header. This is going to be, this is going to be authorization. And the value is going to be bearer space. And then I'm going to copy this token and paste that in there. And now we can initialize this call. 
we can see that there was an error. We can go back and check over here, and we can see it's because we don't have this in the header. That's what the H denotation means. So let's add a header. This is going to be content slash type, and the value is going to be application slash JSON. Now we can initialize our call. When I was reformatting, I accidentally edited the name. Now it works. And if we check my WhatsApp, we can see that I got a message over here. Now, we don't want to send the hello world message. We want to send this message that we made. And I just want to note that since I made this with you, I realized that I had made a mistake. Over here, when we add a URL, the website URL, what we add dynamically in there is just what goes after it. So we can't really dynamically update the whole URL. It's just what happens after this little bit. So the only thing that we can edit is after HTTPS slash bit.ly, what comes in, and that would be zero to one bubble. So let's make this name account confirmation. That's what we see over here. And now, if we look, we actually have some of these mail merge terms that are dynamic and we want to be able to change them. But how do we pass those in in the API call? We can see an example of that over here, but this doesn't in the documentation about message templates. Look at template categories, etc. And with this, you could probably figure it out. But I'm just going to walk you through it. And inside this curly brace for template, which is what goes over here, we want to press enter. And this can go much lower. Now, after the curly brace for language, let's add a comma. In quotes, I'm going to write components. This is where I'm going to pass in the values. And then we can add some square brackets to mark the start and the end of the components. Within that, let's add a curly brace. And just enter that as well. Now, when we denote the components, we need to go section by section. So we have a header here. We don't have that. We have a body, a footer, and button. So right now, all we have to deal with is the body, which has got this dynamic, and the buttons, which has this dynamic. Your components, I'm going to write body, because that's the first section that we are targeting. It's actually type in quotes equal to body so they know where to look let's add a comma and then another one this is going to read parameters these are the things that we are changing and i'm going to put the square brackets here and then curly brackets inside that now the format for each of these parameters are the same so if over here i didn't just have one if i had two or three or four or five you're using the same technique you're just adding commas in between each of the curly braces. We want to write type is equal to text or media or whatever the type is. Then a comma and text is equal to, in quotes, we're going to add these greater than, less than sign, and then whatever you want your hint to be. Right now, this is thank you, Anya, for creating an account. It's a name. So this is going to read name. And that's all we have for our body, but we also have to deal with the button at the bottom. So I'm going to add a comma over here. And let's add curly braces again. I'm going to follow the same format, so I'm literally just going to copy and paste this in. But this type is going to be buttons. Buttons need a little more button 
buttons need a little more specification. So I need to also add subtype over here. And this is going to read URL because our button is redirecting them to a specific place. Then I need to add a comma and an index. Since you could potentially have multiple buttons, you need to specify which button you're talking about. This is index zero in quotes like that. And then add another comma, and then we can get into parameters. And it's going to be the same format, except instead of name, I'm just going to make this URL ending. And when we add it like this, Bubble automatically realizes that that's dynamic and adds it down here. I'm going to uncheck private so we can change it from wherever we want. And I'm going to make the name just temporarily Anya and the URL 0 to 1 bubble. And now we can initialize our call and click save. But we can make it work from here. How do we make it work from here? An action. So here I have a page, it's just got a simple input and then a button sent message. And let's add a workflow. Under plugin, since we're using the API connector plugin, I'm going to scroll all the way down and see my WhatsApp slash send a message. Here I can specify the two things that we had, the name and then the URL ending. Our name is going to be input A's value, and I want the URL ending to just be static, zero to one bubble. But you could see how you could change it. Now let's preview this application. And I'm gonna write Allison as the name, and then click send a message. This normally takes a little bit to load, so I'm just gonna wait. And we can see that I just got it. This was a little bit late, but it does normally take a couple seconds to go through. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. And check out my video on how to level this up and work with the webhook. So when I reply to this message, your application is able to read it.